the calculus of logarithmic functions. We have the derivative of the derivative of the natural log of x is very simple. It is 1 over x. The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. You want it more simple than that? No, I mean like So does it get more difficult? Probably. A little bit. Um, if you have the derivative of a, so what's the base of the natural log? E. e. If the base is different, if you have log base b of x, then the derivative is still 1 over x. It's times the natural log of b in the denominator. So we're not going to deal very much with this one, and I will not put that one on your test. Okay, and uh, as I mentioned before, you learned that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Okay, and that will be on your test, but I said the derivative of b to the x is b to the x times the natural log of b. That will not be on your test. So I just don't see them come up on the AP exam. And if I ever do, then I'll change the content, but I don't see them come up. Was it part of my calculus when I was in college? Yes. Question? So we only log base 2 here in test No, the log bases you'd be dealing with are E on the test. Ah, uh, E. So all natural logs are based on E. Yes. Okay. All right, so let's find the derivative of the natural log of 1 over x squared. There are two ways of doing this, and I don't care which way you do it. The first way is that people tend to use the chain rule. If I set up the chain rule, I'm going to set it up over here. I have the natural log of u, and what's on the inside? 1 over x squared. Let's rewrite that. x to the negative, x to the negative 2. What's the derivative of natural log of u? 1 over u. Okay with that? Okay, and what's the derivative of x to the negative 2? And when I take that derivative, I get the following. I get negative 2 x to the negative 3rd over x to the negative 2. Is everybody convinced that that's what I get? Now, if we want to simplify that, we're going to have to move our exponents. Agreed? So as we move our exponents, this would be a negative 2x squared over x cubed. Right? I had to move the one that was at the top to the bottom, the one that's at the bottom to the top. And so then this simplifies to negative 2 over x. That's the derivative. Yes? Because the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. Better? Okay. I would not do the problem that way. I believe there's a better way, and I spent yesterday doing a review so that you would see this. Sometimes I get complaints from people about this process. You can do it however you want. I think that this is a lot better, and I think some people will very much appreciate me sharing this with you. Um, I have f of x is equal to the natural log of, I'm going to rewrite this as x to the negative 2 power. Does everybody agree that these expressions are the same? Okay, so learning what we learned yesterday, how could I continue to rewrite this? The negative 2 could drop out front. That's one of the rules, is it not? Oh, boy. I will say that's good enough. We'll say it's good enough. Have I taken the derivative yet? No, I haven't, have I? I've not taken the derivative at all. Okay, 
So um, I just dropped the negative 2 out front. Let's now take the derivative. What's the derivative of natural log of x? 1, one. one over, over x. x. Multiplied by negative 2, I get negative 2 over x. Okay, what's the derivative of natural log of x? 1 over x is you multiply by negative 2, you get negative 2 over x. I showed you two methods. So the question, question from Kendall is, in this case, if you have the logarithm of something and there's an exponent, you can move the exponent out front. Now, hold on here. I have people start in, in this class, they start to do crazy things, though. So if I have, uh, just to make sure we're clear, everybody, suppose I have sine cubed of uh, 3x. Can I take this 3 and drop it out front so it has 3 sine of 3x? No. It works with logarithmic expressions. Sometimes people will do this. They'll say e to the x squared, and they'll just drop the x squared out front of, of e and stuff like that. It only works for logarithms. Better? Okay. All right. Uh, let's try this one. So what do you notice is different about letter B? It has a base of 4. So again, you're not going to be tested here on this, but I'm just going to show you what that looks like. I think you have one or two questions like that in your worksheet. Uh, but I will create the uh, chain rule. And you could, if you wanted to, you could just drop the 2x out front. I'm going to choose to not do that because I think you'll understand this better. Um, I have the log base 4 of u. What is u in this situation? e to the 2x. From what we've discussed in our notes, what's the derivative of log base 4 of u? 1 over u times natural log of 4. Good. 1 over u times the natural log of 4 in the denominator. What is the derivative of e to the x? e to the x. What's the derivative of e to the 2x? 2e to the 2x. Okay, 2e to the 2x. We use the chain rule there. Uh, so you didn't even need to set up the boxes. You see that? Can I now multiply these together? Yeah, and when you do, look at what you're going to get. On the top, you get 2e to the 2x. And on the bottom, you get e to the 2x times the natural log of 4. What happens? Those cancel, I get 2 over the natural log of 4. Uh, so I set up the chain rule. I have e to the u. I have 2x. Derivative 2x is 2. Derivative e to the u is e to the u. So I have 2e to the 2x. Maddie recalled that we said that when you're taking the derivative of e to something, you just take the derivative of that thing and drop it in front. We good? Okay, flip it over. Good job. Okay, tell me something about example C. Quotient rule. Excellent. You guys are you guys are good. Good job. So I'm going to use the quotient rule, and the quotient rule says the derivative of the top, which is. <laughs> awesome. So five times is the charm. We got one over x times e to the x minus e to the x times natural log of x. Whoa. Sorry. All over e to the x squared, which is e to the 2x. Okay, so we do need to simplify this. There's something obvious that's going to simplify here. What do you see? I can factor out an e to the x on top, and it'll cancel with 1 in the bottom. Can I just do that one step? You guys all see I can factor out e to the x and cancel 1? So if I do that, I get 1 over x minus the natural log of x all over e to the x. So can I leave an answer like that? Why not? It's a complex fraction. Yes. See it? Yep. Okay. 
Okay, I was going to say, uh, yeah. our, one, over, one over X, and that's a lot of the same thing, but they're not because it's a derivative. Right, yes. Good, good question. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, this isn't going to take very long, but we have to make sure that we uh, we have a complex fraction. So I'm going to write that over 1. I'll multiply this by x and that by x. I must create common denominators. I have to re I have to simplify my complex fraction. And we've learned a long time ago that in order to do that, you've got to create one fraction top, one fraction at the bottom. So I will have 1 minus x natural log of x over what? x over e to the x over 1. So now we have that fraction divided by a fraction multiplied by the reciprocal and I get 1 minus x natural log of x divided by x e to the x. That's my derivative. I would say that that's an excellent example of the type of problem that I don't think is too difficult for us. Uh, but does require just a little bit of our algebra knowledge as well. Would you agree? So it's not too long, it's not too messy, but you know, sometimes if you take a test, you'll you'll get that as an answer. You'll be like, well, that doesn't look like an answer. Nope. That's a that's a problem I would like to give. Okay. All right. Uh, letter D looks really complicated, doesn't it? Okay. So I'm going to make letter D really, really simple. Would you like to make it simple? Yeah. I'm going to do that for you, but I need to just get something off my chest right now. And, and this is the piece I'm going to bring to your attention. On the last test, we had this. We had a x squared minus 3x plus 1 times x to the 4th plus 3x squared minus 2x plus 2. And I said, hey, folks, I want you to find the line tangent at x equals 0. Okay? And so you said, well, I need, I need points on the line. So your point on the line was 0. And what did you do to get the y value? You plug it in and you got, say, well, we, that's easy. We got 1 times 2. We got 2. See how easy that was? There you go. Um, and then what you would need to find the slope. In order to find the slope, what did you do? We do the derivative, right? And in order to do the derivative, we should use the... So why are we multiplying that out? We still had 10% 10 10 of our class multiply that whole freaking thing out. And you see what I'm saying? Folks, I got out the fork and I started to go towards my eye with it. And, and Tenley got up out of bed and she said, Dad, don't. It's not worth it. She said, give them another chance. And I said, tell me I've given them the chance. And she said, Dad, just one more. So the fork, the fork is going in the eye if we, if, we, if we don't do this on the test, okay? All right? So I don't want to multiply that out four times. And, and furthermore, some people try to set up the chain rule with the product rule with a double chain rule as well. Ah! Don't stop. Please do this. The natural log of x plus 4 to the fourth. Anybody? Then what? Oh, x plus 2 to the fourth. Sorry. <laughs> Then what? <laughs> Not yet. Uh, then what? Hi. You did it yesterday. Oh, oh my sweet. Okay, is that, everybody see that? Yep. How I broke it up into two separate parts? Yeah. So now, I don't have to use the product rule anymore, do I? No. Hey, wait a minute. What can I do with the 4? And the 10? Oh, wow. So I haven't even taken a derivative. I have y equals 10, natural log of x plus 2. What? Well, uh, sorry. I, I, I just, I brought up the I thing and it's scaring me right now. I'm like, what did I commit to? Uh, X plus 2, uh, there we go, plus 10, natural log of X minus 3. 
Yeah. Are you okay with that? Yeah. yeah. How'd you get, um, LN? How'd you get the one before that? Like, this one? Yeah. So we learned yesterday, if you have the natural log of A times B, you could rewrite that as the natural log of A plus the natural log of B. Oh. Okay. I, that's all I did, right? So now, the, aren't, don't you agree that these expressions are easier to work with? Yeah. Yeah. So let's take the derivative of this one. Okay. I have 4 natural log of u. And what's on the inside? x plus 2. What's the derivative of 4 natural log of u? 4 over u. And the derivative of x plus 2 is? 1. What's the derivative of, uh, so I got 10 natural log of u, and I got x minus 3. What's the derivative of 10 natural log of u? 10 over u. What's the derivative of x minus 3? So all I have is 4 over what? Plus 10 over? That's the derivative. That's, that's it. But in order to do that, it requires that you remember your logarithmic rules, right? So that's why last year, it's kind of like, well, when are we going to use this? Last year, you took a course that was called pre-calculus. Almost like it was to prep you for calculus. In fact, most all the math that you do, aside from geometry, is a prep for calculus. That is its singular purpose. And you guys are the very few who actually see it all the way through. So congratulations to you. That's your derivative. It's beautiful. Here we go. A couple more. Calculus 2, calculus 3. They got linear algebra, differential equations, complex calculus, real analysis. Try setting up letter E on your own. Don't see it all the way through. Set it up as far as you can. Take one minute. Set it up as far as you can. Ready, set, go. Five, four, three, two, one. How you should set this up is as follows. This should be u to the one half. You're taking the square root of this entire piece on inside goes natural log of 2x minus 1. Did somebody tell me how they set it up differently that was incorrect? Yes. I put, I did it one half natural log of. Excellent. So that's what I was looking for. Let's see what she wrote. She wrote one half natural log of 2x minus 1. Can everybody understand why she did that? Yeah, so if the original function was the natural log of the square root of 2x minus 1, then it could come out. But you're taking the square root of the natural log function as well. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay, now the derivative is going to be pretty easy once we identify the outer structure. What's the derivative of u to the 1 half? 1 over 2 roots of u. That was easy. And do we know how to take the derivative of natural log of 2x minus 1? Yep, we could just set up a chain rule. I have the natural log of u, and what goes on the inside? 2x minus 1. What's the derivative of natural log of u? 1 over u. What's the derivative of 2x minus 1? 2. So when you multiply these, what do you get? 2 over 2x minus 1. Agreed? So that's that derivative. I put it right in this box here. Now I multiply these together, what's going to happen to those twos? So what are you going to be left with in the top? 1 over, and in the bottom you got the square root of u. What is u in this situation? Natural log of 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1. That's your derivative. Is good? Okay, good. Two more. This one is more familiar to you. I want to save time. I don't want to use the quotient rule. I will not use the quotient rule. Somebody tell me how can I avoid using the quotient rule? Natural log of 
minus. Great. Now I see I've, I've avoided the dividing thing. I don't like that. So now what are you going to do? Drop the 5 out front. So we have the natural log of x minus 5, natural log of x squared minus 2x plus 4. Well, that looks a lot easier, doesn't it? Because, so I forgot a y out front here or something, but and now my smart board broke. But um, what's the derivative of natural log of x? So this piece becomes 1 over x, and then what do we have to set up here? Go ahead, set that up, try that piece on your own. I get my board back. Somebody wanna somebody wanna do it? Come on up. Grab it. Yeah, you totally No, don't do that. No, don't. No, just do it like we're supposed to do it. I want to do logarithmic differentiation. <laughs> you have to step out of the light. Okay. What did I do? No. That's what I got. If you left the top as 5 times 2x minus 2, that's fine. That's what I got. So that's, the that's the answer. That's your derivative. That's y prime. That's what I was missing the whole time. I needed a y equals. That's what, that's what broke the board. Oh, yeah. Plus four. Sorry. Yep. Yep. We good? Last problem? Good job. You guys are doing well. All right, thoughts about this one? Yeah, we got no option but to do the quotient rule, do we? we? We got no chance here. Right, if this was the natural log of, say, 3 over 4 plus x, then you could totally do uh, split it up. But this is a natural log on top, a natural log on the bottom. We got no shot. We just have to set the quotient rule. So... Let's do it. Fortunately, we're really intelligent. Just think of how difficult this is if you're not smart. What's the derivative of 5 natural log of x? 5 over x. What's the derivative of 3? 0 times the quantity. Good. Minus. Now I'll do the derivative of the bottom. What's the derivative of 4? Zero, what's the derivative of negative two natural log of x? Negative two over x, so it'll be a plus two over x times the quantity five natural log of x plus three. And that will all be over four minus two natural log of x quantity squared. So in this situation, what, what's wrong? Why can't I just leave it like that? Complex fraction, huge issue. And if you notice here, I'm going to have 5x times negative 2 natural log, and I'm going to have 5x times, or 2 over x times 5 natural log. Those are actually going to be the same things. They're just opposite, aren't they? So watch what happens when I multiply this out. We are going to get some nice canceling here. So 5 over x times 4 is 20 over x minus... 10 natural log of x over x plus this times this gives you 
10 natural log of x over x plus 6 over x. That's all over 4 minus 2 natural log of x quantity squared. Stop calling me. What? Yep. So that and that are gone, right? What'd you get in the top? Good. 26 over x over 4 minus 2 natural log of x quantity squared over 1, right? So when you multiply by the reciprocal, we get f prime of x is equal to, and it turns out it's just 26 in the top, and in the bottom is x times the quantity 4 minus 2 natural log of x squared. Yeah.